VTI and VO are the two largest Vanguard ETF in the world, and since the beginning, people have been wondering which one of the two ETFs is the best choice for the foundation of their portfolio. Well, today we're going to answer this question. My name is Rick, welcome to my investing channel, and today we're going to compare these two ETFs to try to understand once and for all if you should buy one or the other. So let's start with a quick overview of the two ETFs. The Vanguard S&P 500 ETF VO and the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF VTI are the two biggest of more than 80 ETFs offered by Vanguard, an investment giant with $7.2 trillion in assets and management. Both ETFs are low-cost, broadly diversified, and track major US stock indexes. VO tracks the S&P 500 index, which is made up of the 500 largest publicly traded companies in the United States. This means that VO is heavily invested in large-cap stocks, which tend to be more stable and have lower volatility than smaller-cap stocks. VTI, on the other hand, tracks the CRSP US Total Market Index, which includes all publicly traded companies in the United States, regardless of of their size. This means that VTI is more diversified than VO with a greater exposure to mid-cap and small-cap stocks. Both ETFs are excellent, low-cost options for your portfolio. Both are market-cap weighted funds, meaning the percentage of each holding depends on the size of the companies in the indexes. VTI covers the whole US market and holds more than 3,700 stocks. This gives it a better diversification and the benefits of small and mid-cap stocks before they grow into large caps. VO instead is less diversified because it only includes large caps, which nevertheless had a better performance in the last 10 years. VTI and VO offer almost the same dividend yields, 1.35% for VTI and 1.36% for VO, and they both pay them quarterly in March, June, September, and December. VO earns a four-star rating with Morningstar, while VTI earns a three-star rating. If you're wondering what Morning star ratings are, their star ratings are backward looking metrics based on the investment past performance. Both ETFs are available to purchase from any online broker, so if you invest from the US, you can use, for example, M1 Finance, Webull, or even Vanguard itself. While if you invest from Europe, my suggestion is Trade Republic, which is one of the most established brokers in Europe, and next to ETFs and free savings plans, offers also 4% per year on your cash and a free card that you can use as a debit card with your liquidity. If you use the link in the description below, you'll get a free share with a value from 10 to 100 euros. Before diving into the differences of the two ETFs, let's talk about the similarities. Both ETFs are classified as large plant, although VTI actually also includes meat and small cap. For both ETFs, the minimum investment is $1, or depending on the broker, even less. The index sampling or index replication is passive in both ETFs. This makes them both extremely cheap with an expense ratio of 0.03%, which by the way, not only is cheap compared to the industry average of 0.47% for ETFs and mutual funds, but also below Vanguard's average of 0.08%. The net asset center management are slightly higher for VOO, with 436 billion against 390 billion for VTI. This puts VOO in third position in the list of the biggest ETFs in the world and VTI in fourth, preceded only by the S&P 500 ETFs by iShares and SPDR. If instead of ETFs you are more of an index fund investor, don't worry because you can buy VTI as an index fund through VTSAX, the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund Admiral Shares, and VO through VFIAX, the Vanguard S&P 500 Index Fund Admiral Shares. If you want to know how to invest in index funds and what's the difference with ETFs, you can check my full guide on index funds investing from this video here. And of course, you will find linked up here and in the description below. Now, if we look at the differences between VO and VTI, the main differences are the number of holdings and the fact that VTI also covers mid-cap and small-cap. VO is focused on the 500 best publicly traded companies in the American stock market, while VTI includes all 3,700 companies of the same market. If we check the overlap between the two ETFs, we notice that around 87% of VTI comprises the 500 companies of VO while the remaining 13% are all the remaining 330 stocks of the American stock market. And this goes to show you that, despite VTI being much more diversified in terms of total number of holdings, if we consider the weights, the two ETFs are exceptionally similar. This makes sense when we look at the top 10 holdings. They are the same companies for both ETFs, and VTI just has, for each holding, just a little less weight, because of the fact that 13% of the ETF goes to the additional 3,200 companies 
of the rest of the stock market. And the total weight of the top 10 holdings is 32.07% for VOO and 27.80% in VTI. Small difference, but again, it shows you how VO is much more focused on a smaller portion of the stock market. The higher diversification of VTI, while being good for some reasons, also opens up to higher risks. For example, VTI has more companies that can go bankrupt or that are highly volatile, because it includes small caps. In fact, VTI has a turnover of 3%, while VO only 2%. And if you're wondering what the turnover is, the turnover rate is the percentage of the weight that gets changed every year because of companies that are dropped out of the index or that gain access to it. Now, to be honest, both the turnover rates of VO and VTI are extremely low, so not something you need to worry about. Now, I know that in my audience there are a lot of fans of the tech sector, so I want to show you how the sector exposure of the two ETFs looks like. The exposure to the tech sector is higher in VTI than in VO, with 32.1% against 29.6%. This shows that there is a higher concentration of tech companies in mid and small caps compared to large cap. You're free to pause the video if you like, and I highlight in green the sectors that have an overweight in an ETF compared to the other ETF. What you can notice here is that the heaviest sectors in VO are technology, financials, and healthcare, while for VTI are technology, consumer discretionary, and industrials. So, we've seen that the higher diversification and the inclusion of small cap and mid cap are the characteristic factors that make VTI different from VO. So you might ask, is it better? Is it worse? Well, this is something we're gonna discuss now. Obviously, being focused on only 500 companies, VO adds a diversification risk because a bad performance of large caps would damage VO much more than it would VTI. On the other hand, large cap stocks have been dominating the market in the last 10 years, and you could argue that being focused on the best 500 companies actually improves the performance compared to broadening up to the whole stock market. It's also true that small cap stocks are more volatile than large caps, making VTI more volatile than VO. So, to decide which ETF is better, there are three approaches. You can either choose based on your tendency to diversify, or you can choose based on past performance, or you can choose based on how you think that small caps and large caps will perform in the future. So let's go through all of the three methods. Just by looking at diversification, VTI is clearly the winner because it includes the whole American stock market. So, if you just want more diversification, you should go for VTI. The second method is by looking at past performance. Here it starts getting interesting because we're gonna find contrasting results if we compare the last 10 years with long-term historical results. Year to date, VO delivered 7.94% while VTI 7.25%. In the last five years, VO delivered 89% against 82% of VTI, meaning an annualized return of 13.58% for VO and 12.76% for VTI. In the last 10 years, VO delivered 229.77% or 12.67% annually and VTI 212.58% or 12.07% annually. Even when we look at the performance since the inception of VOO in 2010, VOO dominated with an average of 13.05% against 12.58% of VTI annually. This would suggest that focusing on the top 500 companies actually does give you an edge on performance. But let's ask ourselves this question. How did small cap and mid cap perform in the last 20, 30 years? If we look at one of the last reports from S&P Global on the matter, we find a nice graph showing the average return of large, mid and small caps since 1994. What people don't know is that in the last 30 years, mid cap and small cap have been outperforming large cap by a lot. And this even considering the overperformance of large cap of the last 10 years. Mid cap, represented here by the S&P mid cap 400 index, averaged 13.1% per year, followed by small cap 600 with 12.4% and large cap with 11.2%. So what can I understand from this behavior? First of all, the fact that large caps have outperformed in the last 10 years doesn't mean they will outperform forever. Second, that now smaller companies have the potential to act as important diversifiers, should the largest begin to stumble. We've talked already in past videos of how much the large cap market has grown in the past two years and how dangerous current stock pricing for the top companies. Apple, for example, has risen from a 3% weight in the S&P 500 as of December 2015 to a 5.6% weight today, larger than the combined weight of 158 smaller constituents. So to summarize performance, based on short-term performance, you would prefer VOO 
based on long term, you would prefer VTI. But let's move now to the third method. And the third method is trying to foresee if in the future, small and mid cap will grow faster than large cap based on current valuation. There are two important factors working in favor of small and mid-sized company stocks. First, in the last 10 years, investors have been busy beating up the price of large caps, making smaller ones cheaper to buy. S&P small and mid cap indexes this year trade at about 14 times estimated earnings, compared with a ratio of about 20 for the S&P 500. That means small and mid cap trade at roughly 30% discount to large caps. In other words, we're paying now large cap companies 30% more relative to the earnings compared to small cap and mid cap. The second good factor of small and medium stocks is that they're looking cheap relatively to their history. Mid cap stocks are trading at a 14% discount relative to their average PE of 2005, and small companies at a 19% discount to their historical average. This either means that large caps are overbought or small caps are oversold, or a combination of the two. So is the situation gonna reverse soon? We don't know. But what we know is that in the long term, stock prices tend to lean towards the real value. So if small and medium sized companies are undervalued right now, they will tend to be either correctly valued or even overvalued at some point in the future. This third method of evaluating VO and VTI makes me tend to prefer VTI over VO. The good news is that we're actually looking for the needle in the haystack. Both ETFs are great, have a similar performance, are market cap weighted, and therefore we always have similar composition. And no matter which one of these ETFs you will choose, if you just buy and hold, it will perform better than 95% of hedge funds in the long term, which I say it's a pretty good starting point. Since both ETFs have specific advantages, there is nothing wrong with investing in both VTI and VO, as long as you understand that the overlap between the two is relatively high. This means also that investing in both ETFs will not really provide you with a great deal of additional diversification, but you still may wanna do it if you wanna cover the whole stock market with an overweight in large cap that is higher than what VTI offers by itself. Honestly, I don't think you're really gaining anything by buying both, so I would suggest you to just choose one and stick with it, knowing that either way, you made a great choice. Before concluding the video, I wanna show you how rich you would actually become if you keep investing in VO or VTI in the long term. I'm gonna use a compound interest calculator that I created and that I make available to you for free from the link in the description below. So if you like, check that, drop a like, and get a free copy for you. Now. Let's assume that VO will deliver in the future the same results of the last 10 years, namely 12.67% per year. Let's say you can invest $10,000 now and you manage to invest $500 per month in the next years. The table is gonna show you how your portfolio is gonna grow and as you can see, you're gonna reach millionaire status in 24 years. Even if we assume a 10% rate of return instead of 12.67%, which is more conservative, you're just gonna need 28 instead of 24 years. I know, it sounds like a very long time, but you need to consider two things. First of all, most people don't invest at all. And after 45 years of work, have almost no savings to show. And point number two, in reality, you may start with $500 per month, but actually during these years, you're also gonna be able to invest more and more because your salary is also gonna increase. So you're actually gonna reach your goal faster than that. If you wanna calculate exactly how much money you're gonna need to be able to retire based on your personal situation and wish, check out this video where I will walk you through the calculation step by step. You will find it linked here and in the description below. If you still haven't done it, consider subscribing to my channel and write a comment anytime with your questions or maybe with some suggestions on future videos that you'd like me to produce. Thank you all for watching. I wish you a great day and as always, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.